Now, I want to introduce, maybe underneath where you've written all that, give me a little subheading, and let's say notation. It's important that we know how to describe these discrete random variables. And what we're going to do is, remember I said we're still in the same sphere of probability, right? We're going to borrow some notation from that and just like tweak it just a little bit, okay? So normally, when we say the probability of something, right, we would use the capital P, and then in brackets, we would put like what's the thing that's happening, okay? So say for example, if we said, Let's go out into the playground at recess and pick a random student. We might say a discrete random variable might be, for instance, the student's age in years. I'll say that one more time, right? The discrete random variable, I'm specifying it as the student's age in years. Why do you think I might be specifying years? Have a look at the... Definition, where did my razor go? Here it is. Why can't I just say like student's age? Couldn't that work? Yeah. Time itself is continuous. Time itself is continuous, right? You're like, how old am I? Well, how old I am this second is different to the next second and so on. And you could just like go down to nanoseconds or picoseconds. You could go on going forever, right? Just like the water, it's a continuous variable. But when I specify in years, I can say, oh, the probability of it equaling 17, that's a particular, like that's, that's discrete. There are chunks, right? Now, normally we'd be quite happy to just say P of, say, 17. And in the context of a question, that'd be fine. But I'm going to ask you to write down here student age equals because we need to specify this thing that's being measured here, okay? And that, right there, that there is the discrete random variable. Student age in years, that's the discrete random variable. It's discrete, as we just discussed. It's random, you don't know. Those students going around could be any of them that you pick out. And it's a variable because, of course, it can change, right? So student age in years is the one. What about you when you're rolling a die? When you're rolling a die, what's the thing that we're normally interested in? The it's the numbers, but not just like there are six numbers on a die. There's a particular number that you're usually interested in. Which one is that? The one on the top, right? Um, we, usually, we would usually say it's the number showing, right? Even though I mean, they're all showing, except for the one on the bottom, but you get the idea, right? So I'm going to name the discrete random variable. Instead of just saying probability of 6, I'm like, what's, what's the variable, right? So I would say uh, number showing on die. You can see how I'm going out of my way to define what the discrete random variable is, which in probability we never used to worry about that, right? And I might say, oh, it's equal to 6. Okay? So again, let me highlight. You've got this part here, that's the discrete random variable, and then these things here are the particular value you're interested in. Does that make sense? I could over here say um, the probability of this total amount equaling Maybe I'm just interested in the big one, 20 cents, right? What's the probability of that happening? Answer, 1 over 7, okay? Now, these are just particular examples. We generalize this, and you can see, you'll see in a second why I'm sort of drawing this out so much, because this next line I'm about to write, which you will see over and over again in the textbook, at least when I first encountered it, I was like, that's confusing. Did you come up with this notation just to confuse me? Well, if you see it in line with this, you'll see why it makes sense. When you have some number that you're interested in, in maths, and it varies, what is the letter of choice that we tend to use? X, right? So this number over here, it's generally denoted with a little x, right? But then you've got this other thing that you need to specify, the discrete random variable. Sometimes it's this x, sometimes it's that x, and so on and so on and so on. All different versions of x. So which letter did they choose to indicate this? I'm not joking. They picked a big X. Now, if you're like me, you look at that and you're like, the probability that X is X? Are you trying to make this hard for me? Answer, no, they're not trying to make it hard. They're trying to show that these two things are related, right? This is the discrete random variable, like student age or the number on the die. And this is a particular version or a particular instance of this. 
right? It's like a, a kind of um, a snapshot in time, as it were, or the person who you randomly pick, okay? So this is going to be equal to some probability. Um, you can work out this one, for example. The probability of the number showing on a die is equal to 6 would be 1 out of 6. Um, if we were to say in the, I mean, how big's your grade? 200 and something. Um, but I assume there's some people in other years who have age 17, and there's some people in your year who don't. So maybe I say, uh, let's call it, I don't know, 290. What's the whole school population? 2000 and something, maybe 2000 and, let's call it 2050. Okay. And this is, well, it just depends on what our discrete random variable is and what specific value we're after. So, you know that table that we drew up over here, right? We call this total amount, we call this probability. Let's use the notation we've just introduced up here. So this, this up here, are the particular values that can be taken on. So this thing up here is little x, right? You can see these are particular values. Whereas down here, we're looking at the probability that the total amount is equal to these particular little values. So it's P of x equals x. That, I mean, you can say big x equals little x if you want, but you're going to get pretty tired of saying that pretty fast. Okay? <laughs> now, just for the sake of confusion, sometimes uh, mathematicians are like, oh, this thing is too long, right? I introduced this notation because um, I want to be specific and I want to be clear, but sometimes they're like, ain't nobody got time for that. So instead, they just write this. Little pip. And you're like, we were using that before. It's like, yeah, I know. But we want to be able to use this sometimes, and other times we want to be able to use a, um, a shorthand. Okay? Now we'll say, just as a final note on this before I uh, set you going on some questions and then we'll have a think about it together, there is one other advantage to using an equation inside here. An equation inside here. For example, look over here, right? I might be wanting to ask you, what's the probability that Amy gets 10 or 15 cents? 10 or 15 cents, right? Now, I could write probability that x equals 10 or 15. I could just write those words, right? But mathematically, we have some symbols that could say that same thing using this kind of notation, right? I'm looking for the probability that x is between 10 and 15. How, how would I say that with symbols, not with words? Yeah, I'd, I'd use inequality notation, wouldn't I? I would say it's between, and I'm including, 10 and 15. Do you see how that's just a more succinct way to say it? So even though it's slightly a bit of a pain, you're like, oh, I have to learn new notation, okay? It makes certain other things easier to say, and we're actually gonna do this a whole lot in the questions to come, all right?